please like this video. It is guaranteed to go viral because what I'm about to reveal is going to blow your mind. But even before that, I want you to understand that this is sort of what I'm saying is a foundation for a detailed discussion that I'm going to have at 8 p.m. tonight with Dr. Subramanian Swami, who was the first one to unearth this whole scam. Delaru, fake currency, Chidambaram, Mr. Maya, Arvind Mayaram, Ashok Chavla, and many others. So fasten your seat belts and let's go for a ride. But before even that, thank you, viewers, for making this book, Who Painted My Money White, number one again. Again, this is a book of fiction, but there are a lot of facts that happen around that time, which tells you why demonetization was done, why demonetization was an essential step to save India's democracy. I mean it. It, it was an essential step to save democracy in India. Okay, here we go. So far, this person's name has not come in the Mayaram CBI FIR, although it should be there in bold letters in big font size right at the top. But he will not come because this person has a way of making sure that he covers his traces as much as possible. But no worry, it is going to come. It is just a matter of time. Nothing. Nobody could even lift their little finger when Mr. Chidambaram was the finance minister. So what happened? 2005, India decides that it is going to uh, use the security threads for which a company which was supplying it currency paper, De La Rue, had a patent on. That patent then turned out to be fake. They did not get the patent up until 2011 in India. So there are a lot of falsifications that took place. What I'm going to talk to you today is not something beyond that, something beyond this that was happening. So here we go. Arvind Mayaram, he was his chief executor at the finance ministry level. This person was uh, in charge of a lot of things, including finding the security change. I mean, periodically, there is a committee that meets and then make sure that the security threats keep changing in the currency so that the counterfeiters will not find it easy that, okay, this rupee hasn't changed in 10 years so we can easily counterfeit it. So there is a schedule where they just keep on changing the security threats and those threats, the information for that is kept in secret and nobody else gets to know of it. Okay, this is first person. The next person is Ashok Chavla. Now, what Chidambaram wants to do always is how do I make money off of anything that my ministry does? What does he do? He puts these two together and forms a company called Security Printing and Minting Corporation of India Limited. This is hived from the finance department. That means they basically took some people out of there and created this. And one of them was the chairman. The other one was the managing director. Okay, Ashok Chawla, who finally got kicked out as the chairman of National Stock Exchange, despite what, 100 reminders. This person was one of the top, you know, henchmen of uh, Chidambaram, if you will. You will find him in every place where there was a scandal that involved Chidambaram. Yet the man roams free. Same with Mayaram, same with KP Krishnan, same with Ramesh Abhishek, same with a bunch of other people. Okay, all these people are protectees, protectees, either protectees or protectors. I don't know which way to think of it. You can think of it protectors because they continue to be in this government. Mr. Me, Mr. Uh, another guy, Shakti Kanta Das, Mr. Modi, despite 100 times being reminded that these people are all faithful to Chidambaram and that they will only do Chittu's bidding person continues to have them. K.P. Krishnan, despite all the mounting allegations that we have given, you know, and, and some there are, you know, CBI, FIRs in place, everything still goes and continues to advise um, the Modi government and the gift city. This person was one of the crooks who designed all the uh, fakery in NSC and in NSCL. But no, they, they, they seem to completely ignore that and continue and flow on. I just can't believe that this government says that it is clean. How can you have a clean government when all your minions are unclean? I don't know. I, it, it just be, blows my mind that people can just keep on saying untruths and get away with it. So what exactly happened? Delarue, which was supplying paper to uh, India, 
in 2010 suddenly woke up and realized that a number of its employees in a unit in Hampshire, I'm going to give you the link, you can read the complete story. They had falsified some paper quality reports. What happens when you falsify the paper quality report? That means the quality of the paper that was shipped to India as to, to make currency did not meet the standards. What happens then? You have, the RBI didn't know that it was happening. So they went ahead and printed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of notes. So what happens then? You have defective paper, which uh, essentially makes it easier for others to counterfeit. Much worse is you as a bank has to reduce your checking of your currency because you know that some of these currencies will not meet the testing rigor of some of your testing equipment. You see how they created a solution inside the banking system of India itself that only cursory checks will be done for the currency because the currency paper itself was flawed. So this is something that is coming out, uh, you know, only when you start investigating the role of Mr. Maya Ram in this whole Maya Jal that they spun so that they could make money. How do they make money in this? They have this intermediate company, right? So you have something where a, a, a good comes from Delaro to this intermediate company and from there to the RBI or whoever is an end user, end purchaser. Anytime you have a company in between, then there is scope for under invoicing slash over invoicing and the balance get skimmed away. So in the process of printing rupees also, they wanted to create an opportunity to skim money. I mean, that's a scandal of, on its own, which I don't think anybody has uh, looked at yet. And I'm hoping that at some point of time they will. So what I'm trying to say is Maya Ram, uh, Chavla, KP Krishnan, Ramesh Abhishek, all of these people were in various arms and you know divisions in uh, uh, in the finance business. Shakti Kanta, that's another one. This guy is now the, the RBI. Guess what? Many people are you know singing praises of him. And the guy's a crook, man. I mean, what what else can you say? I, I, it, it is just you can't get a good product out of flawed raw material. That is my take. Agree with me? Don't agree with me? I leave it to you. But essentially, what has also happened? So this is the part that becomes very interesting. That it is my stand that the the standards for checking the authenticity of currency also got lowered because Delaru supplied defective paper to India. What else will you do? Are you going to say that oh this this note is not good? This note is good. You will create havoc amongst the people. So. UPA is a government of blunders, a decade of decadence, and, and, and I can go on and on. But the problem is you continue to suffer some of the problem, the, the bad stuff these people have left behind. I hope this thing quickly moves and this person is sent to jail. All it takes is one of these minions to start squealing. And, and believe me, a lot of UPA people will go to jail. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tune in at 8 p.m. where I talk to Dr. Subramanian Swami about how this whole scandal was unearthed. He was just president of Janta Party at that point of time. And he had all the resources at his disposal to go doggedly and pursue the fact that Delaru was making a lot of Mickeys. Thanks for watching again. And please click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.